Hi and welcome, this is Homebody Rundown, and this is Pantry Challenge Week 2, where I'm trying to avoid going to the store and just using up items we already have. Just a heads up, this is a long video as I was able to spend a lot of time in the kitchen this week. I will put a link to the YouTube channel that inspired me to do this. It's called Three Rivers Homestead. We eat a mostly vegetarian diet. Also, I am not showing all the foods we made and ate. Sometimes the kids make their own food or I make something separate for them. I have the time to make all this food because I am a stay-at-home parent. Just to note, this tortellini was at the end of my video last week. I said we would make it Saturday and we did. It was very little flavor. I would not recommend it. Now to Sunday, January 7th. Ate a lot of leftovers this weekend, but making some whole wheat pasta for the kids and making extra so we will have it for lunches this week as well. Probably not the primary focus of Pantry Challenge, but this wine is also from the pantry. Since it's whole wheat pasta, it does take a while longer to cook, but it holds up well for a few days in the refrigerator. I ended up freezing a large portion of this, which seems to work fine. I just felt like cheese and crackers, and we did need to use up this box of Triscuits we opened on New Year's Eve, also using up a few fire-roasted red peppers. I bought a four-pack of Triscuits at Costco, and we're just not getting through them. They are best by February. So I put the rest in a jar that I'll leave out on the counter so people remember they're around, put cream cheese on some and sharp cheddar on others, and heated them in the toaster oven, and I did share some of these with others. Monday, January 8th. Had little kids over this weekend, so lots of snacks out. Also pulled a few items out of the pantry, like these graham crackers that expire this month, and this container of peanut M&Ms. A variety of chocolate candies sitting around, and personally, I don't like looking at all the packaging, so going to combine the chocolates. These are chocolate caramels from a local shop. They are so good. First, I'm getting the M&Ms into a jar to look nicer and take up way less space. I was going to just pour these directly, but then I remembered I'm not really so good at it, so I got a funnel. Apparently, I'm also not very good at judging container size requirements. Got one that's just a little bigger and it was good. They all fit. And this just looks so much nicer. Next, getting the crackers into a half-gallon glass jar. I order these from Azure Standard. I'll link them below or in the description. They are made in Taiwan, and I've been really happy with the quality. I do run the jars through the dishwasher. If you order these, the lids are a separate purchase, and I hand wash those. I find even with teenagers, they are more likely to eat something if they can see it, and I like not looking at a box. I can fit two sleeves of crackers into these jars. This brand of graham crackers is from Amazon. I get them in my subscribe and save orders. Using another half gallon jar for the goldfish, I bought the jars in a six pack and they are in pretty consistent rotation around here. You can see another one in the background with oatmeal raisin cookies. Filled this jar, but there are some still in the box. I'll just use a quart jar for the rest. Okay. Maybe I'm not always so terrible at picking the right size. I'll keep this quart jar in the pantry for now. Putting together a pint jar of the random chocolates. Had one of these wooden ball lids on hand. These are very pretty, but you do need to hand wash them. 
Don't need to have both candies out right now, and the peanut M&Ms will last longer, so those will go away, but we'll leave both crackers out. Another side note as I'm throwing this away, it was our first time buying the Trader Joe's orange juice. Youngest child remarked at how good it was and said it was sweeter than the other stuff we get, which would be the OJ from Sam's and Costco. I think those are generally oranges from Brazil and USA, but this one is from Mexico, so we will buy this one again. Making a bean salad using jovial canned kidney beans. I like that these are in glass. Mixed up a vinaigrette with olive oil, white wine vinegar, red pepper flakes, salt, black pepper, onion and garlic powder, and some Italian seasoning I made. I made a lettuce salad a couple days ago, so had chopped red onion left over. Keeping these in the snapware containers prevents the refrigerator from reeking of raw onion. These cooked green beans were made from frozen a few days ago as well. I just cut them into bite-sized pieces. They are also seasoned. I'll save a few green beans in case middle child wants some. He doesn't eat this salad. This was delicious. This is semolina flour. I have the energy to make pasta today, but it won't make much of a dent in this huge container. I only need four cups. I do like to put a towel over the mixer when I add the flour, just so it doesn't poof out everywhere. I do not run the mixer with the towel on. I do not know anything about making pasta. Just started making it when I ordered this flour. I found a recipe online for egg pasta and that's what I'm making today. I need to try other recipes, but youngest child really likes this one. Now I'm going to sort out this top drawer in the bottom freezer. This is the bottom of our refrigerator in the kitchen. This is where I put small items. If I take them to the big freezers, I feel like they'll get lost. In the lower section, I mostly have open bags and two lock and lock containers for the fruit the kids eat most often, strawberries and blueberries. Ideally, I don't wanna add anything else around those containers. I am pretty good at labeling, but if I can look inside and see what it is, I usually don't bother, especially if I'm not going to keep it for very long in the freezer. I found several items I can use for chili this week. This is homemade granola. I'm the only one eating it lately, so I froze some so it wouldn't get stale. I can get this out now since I'm almost through what I have out. Okay, I should have labeled this one. I'm not sure if it's avocado or maybe pea soup. I guess it will be a surprise. I'll keep all of this out to use. This is a lasagna. We'll also defrost that. The rest will go back in. It's mostly cheese, roasted garlic, figs, and cilantro. These four little containers are all over a year old, so I'm going to empty them out. I just don't use spicy much mustard much, and I think this sweetened condensed milk was from some fudge we made last year, and I never needed any more. Pulled out bananas and bread. I can condense these into smaller containers. It's several hours later and I'm going to mix up the pasta. I'm adding one cup of all-purpose flour. This is an egg pasta and I'm making a large amount so I need eight eggs. I'm wearing gloves to avoid a hand wash. My skin gets extremely dry in winter. Pretty sure I will need to get more eggs next week. I like to use a meat fork to scramble these up a bit. My favorite measuring spoons, these are from my grandma's kitchen. I just love the long handles. It's so easy to put these in the silverware tray of the dishwasher. The brand is Foley. This recipe has flour, water, eggs, oil, and salt. I'm using olive oil. Sorry, I can't link the recipe because I just 
jotted it down on a piece of paper over a year ago and I have no idea where it came from. Also, not sure it's the best really since I've only ever made this one. There are plenty of options online. I added water until it came together. Super clean the counter so I can just roll it out on here. There is nothing light or fluffy about this dough. It is dense. I have considered buying the pasta attachment for the KitchenAid, but I doubt you can put it in the dishwasher, and I try to avoid hand washing dishes whenever possible. I cut it into smaller pieces so it's easier to work with. Also, I don't have a large workspace here for rolling out the dough. I have some chronic arm pain, but thought I'd give this a go. We were on vacation and I haven't done much arm work in the past few days, so they were feeling pretty good, but doing work like this where my arms are extended out away from my body and then applying pressure was just not a good combo. Thankfully, I could recruit middle child to roll these out. He did a great job. We just fold up the dough until we're ready to cut it up. I started cutting long strips. It's probably a fettuccine size, but youngest child was able to come and finish this up. She said she likes wider noodles and we went for a bite-sized length. I said whatever she preferred because she was doing the work. Just going to sprinkle these pasta with some flour to help them not stick together. Made this several hours before dinner, so I'm putting it in the refrigerator. I haven't done this before, but it was fine. Using this large Cuisinart pasta pan tonight. This thing is huge. It's 12 quarts. I don't use this a lot because it takes up almost the entire lower space in the dishwasher. I'm just thankful it does fit in the dishwasher. And it is induction ready. I do have an induction stovetop. We filter our water, so it takes a long time to fill a pot this size. I will only fill it part way here and then move it to the stove before it gets too heavy. I usually do this way before I'm ready to cook the pasta, just so it's ready to go. I do salt the water and I will cook this in batches. These are thick pasta or noodles, so this will take a while. I'm just loosening these some before I add them to the water. Be careful when adding them. I only add a little at a time to avoid splatter. Could also use a spoon to lower them in. Oh, I just saw the reflection of the vent filter. It is filthy. I do clean around the edges fairly frequently, but forgot about the filter. Also side note, but it did make me a little paranoid because I took this video and that night I had a reels on my Instagram showing how to clean these filters. I mean, I guess it was convenient. A spoon like this, I call it a spider, would also be good to safely lower the raw pasta into the pan. I like to stir it just to make sure the noodles aren't sticking together. Draining it for a minute before dumping it into the bowl. And starting another batch. Still cooking more, but here's how they look when done. They tasted great and youngest child was very happy. January 9th, making a cake mix from the pantry. This is the Whole Foods Market store brand chocolate cake. My family always likes this one. I don't do anything special, just follow the instructions on the back. It's a couple eggs. I'm using canola oil that I order from Azure Standard. I will link Azure Standard in the description. Also some water, and I prefer to use the mixer for this so I don't have to stir. I rarely make cupcakes because they take more effort. I really like this Pyrex baking dish because it has large handles. I tend to drop things. 
I have been informed by two of the three other people in the house that we are out of butter. What they mean is that we are out of spreadable butter, which everyone loves. Years ago I used to buy it, but now I make it myself. I'm going to leave it on the counter for a bit to soften. Getting out some dried pinto beans so that I can make refried beans tomorrow in the Instant Pot. These two gallon buckets are a much more manageable size for me than five gallon buckets. I can't lift those when they're full of pintos. I'll link them below. The lids are a separate purchase. Opened a new bread from the freezer and we'll have some peaches from the pantry for lunch. I need to preface this with, I'm not sure this is food safe or okay to store for a while in the refrigerator. I just looked at the ingredients of the spreadable butter at the store and copied it. I add oil and salt. Since this is salted butter, not so much salt. I am using avocado oil and olive oil. All olive oil would be too strong of a flavor for us. So really, I'm not sure if all oils would be safe to mix with butter and also to keep refrigerated. I just blend it up in the food processor until it's very smooth. This butter is softened. I would not do this with hard butter or I would cut it into small pieces before adding it to the processor. This looks perfect. My family eats a lot of butter, so I usually mix this with a full pound of butter. It fills these three little Rubbermaid containers. It's very soft now, but it firms up in the refrigerator. We always keep it refrigerated. I'm going to mix up what I call a glaze. If I add fat, I call it frosting. I'm not sure if that's technically correct. Anyway, my husband doesn't like thick frosting and it just adds more sugar. I like to use my hand mixer that um, I plug in for this, but I had to throw part of it away. It was very frustrating because water got inside it and it wouldn't drain, it wouldn't evaporate, so no more electric mixer. This silicone whisk doesn't have the strength for the viscosity here, so I needed to switch to a metal spoon. There are a few lumps still, but that's fine. I probably don't even need to use all of this glaze. Yeah, this will be enough. It certainly is shiny. Mixing up cornbread for dinner. This is a modified Betty Crocker recipe. If it's online, I will link it in the description. The cornmeal is from Azure. I keep this in a one gallon jar. Thankfully, I have a second mixer bowl because the other one is still dirty from the cake mix. I only have one whisk though, so otherwise I would be using it now. Adding in the butter. Also milk, baking powder, and salt. Now sugar. and flour. Melted about a tablespoon of butter in this cast iron frying pan and brushed it all around the bottom and the sides. I do smooth it out some just to get it more level. I forgot to set the timer, but I think I caught it in time. 
making some chili. It may only be me eating this because a couple people aren't feeling great. Using a variety of spices and a jar of kidney beans from the pantry. Also a little container I found of extra taco seasoning. At least that's what it smells like. We'll also add oregano, pepper, garlic, and onion powder. Sauteing onion with the spices and some avocado oil. This will be heavier on tomato than usual because I love tomato and it doesn't bother my stomach. We'll use bouillon for flavor and salt. Adding in some lentils. I have to really tap this strainer because stuff gets wedged around the edge. If I think of it, I spray this stuff out before I put it in the dishwasher. Now some kidney beans. Flip the cornbread out of the cast iron after maybe 20 minutes. So this is the bottom. I will let it cool like this for a while. Added parsley and roasted garlic powder and corn. Getting in the refrigerator and saw the peppers I defrosted for the chili. I really would have rather sauteed the peppers with the onions, but hopefully they'll taste all right. I want to use them up. Here's the cornbread and the cake. I do keep this in the refrigerator since it has that glaze. My husband has a cold, so he's trying this no chicken noodle soup. We've never had this before. I do like the easy open top. We may be in trouble. I can smell the celery and he does not like celery much. Here's my chili. I added pepper jack cheese, cornbread, and Greek yogurt. It was pretty decent for a quick chili. I tasted this soup but was not a fan. Husband did eat it. It just seemed very thin. Sorting through the pintos before I rinse and soak them. I tend to always find black beans in the ones I order from Azure. They must share the equipment. The primary items I'm trying to find are rocks and dirt clumps also rotten beans, and these can be in beans from any brand. I've had trouble getting this in focus, but it just looks like it got moldy before it dried. Wednesday, January 10th, a few more items from the deep freezer, shredded cheddar, some shelled walnuts, and hamburger buns. Also put a few more items in the bottom freezer in the kitchen. I did get this top shelf organized and added this mac and cheese that I found. From the basement I got fish sticks, peas, broccoli, and green beans. I just realized I have two open bags of fish sticks. Also got out a bag of Beyond Burgers. These are the soaked pinto beans. I'll rinse these well before adding to the Instant Pot. The beans are ready to go. I added fresh water. I'm sure all these pressure cookers are different, so make sure to follow your instructions. I always have my booklet handy with the grains and beans pages bookmarked. I should really have these times memorized by now. Cooking beans is fragrant, so I'm opening the window. Okay, need to get these walnuts in containers. I'll use this attached lid jar for the ones we are snacking on and store the others in a regular quart jar. These say 2022, so I'm trying one to make sure they're still good, and they are, but of course they have been in the freezer. I also really like black walnuts. Sometimes my dad would try those when I was a kid. If I could get a big bag of those for a decent price, I would buy those too. trying to put the plastic lid on the jar. I think I'm on autopilot. These walnuts are from Sam's Club. I feel like they have better prices and selection than Costco in my area, 
but Costco is more likely to have organic options. These are California grown. And now this is the right lid. Next, I'm getting this coffee in jars since I have the stuff out. It's a holiday blend from Starbucks. I'm not a huge fan, so it will probably take a while to get through it. I got out a clean funnel and this is a half gallon jar because this is the big bag from Sam's Club. Just going to work out a little more space. Yeah, that's good. I already opened this bag and have a quart jar in the cupboard near the coffee pot, so I can put the rest in there. But I will speed this up a little bit. Decided that since I have the funnel out, I will make some trail mix for middle child. He goes through this incredibly fast. Of course, like a third of it is candy. I'm using a half gallon jar. Adding chocolate chips and peanuts. Also some natural peanut butter chips. These were expensive, so I do not want them to go bad. raisins giving this a stir before it gets too full and finally cashews to be fair I will probably eat some of this too Youngest child doesn't like peanuts or peanut butter, so I always have a container for her that's just cashews. Healthy and kind of healthy snacks for everyone. I do like having snacks in matching jars. Time to make hummus. These are chickpeas that defrosted in the refrigerator. Here are the ingredients I'll use. Sorry, no recipe. I just taste it. I'll also add salt. The ingredients are in the food processor. Scraping down the side and blending it some more. Final taste test. It turned out great. My husband eats this almost every day, so it will last about a week. Opening a couple more pantry items, hot cocoa mix, and this hazelnut nut pods creamer. The pinto beans are done. Of course, they are very hot, so be careful. Maybe let them cool down for quite a while. I'm labeling out some of the liquid so I can add it back later if needed. The beans really absorb a lot as they cool. Left some liquid with the beans, adding salt, onion powder, garlic powder, and lime juice, then mashing it a bit. I'm adding some of the bean liquid to one bowl of the chili I made last night to make it more of a soup. The liquid has a lot of really delicious flavor. Using some of the refried beans right away to make quesadillas for the kids. I have the window open right now, that's why it's so steamy. These have cooled down quite a lot. I'm going to add back some of the liquid. Found another black bean. Getting out a new bag of blueberries for the freezer. The kids love these. I got croissants out of the freezer, but no one is eating them, so I'm going to use some for a French toast casserole. 
The inspiration for this was an Acre Homestead YouTube video. I'm just cutting up the bread into smaller pieces and also adding in some other frozen bread cubes. Mixing up the rest of the ingredients. Sorry, I have no recipe for this. Just old bread, eggs, milk, sometimes I use heavy cream, maple syrup, cinnamon, a little salt, and blueberries. I am using frozen blueberries and sprinkling some cinnamon. Pouring over the egg and milk mixture, just to note, this was way more milk than I needed. I think the croissants just do not absorb nearly as much liquid as the whole wheat sandwich breads I usually use. I think this took twice as long to bake through, which it needs to because it has raw eggs. I sprinkled some brown sugar over the top, covered it, and put it in the refrigerator until tomorrow morning. Dinner tonight, I'm going to make a mushroom stroganoff type thing. Roasted garlic I defrosted, Worcestershire sauce, and thyme are the main flavors. I'll use some of the homemade noodles, bouillon, Greek yogurt, and milk. Using 10 ounces of frozen mushrooms. I do love fresh mushrooms, but they go bad quickly and they are so much work. If you have any sort of joint issues or pain, I'm sure you can relate. I do tend to use a lot of frozen chopped vegetables to avoid extra arm work. Added frozen peas and black pepper. The noodles are in and also adding some of this mushroom umami seasoning from Trader Joe's. Luckily, I hadn't added much salt at this point because several ingredients I added have sodium, including this. Frying up some noodles plain for the kids. I love fried pasta. This is done just adding a little milk and some yogurt. Here's my bowl. I added some more yogurt and shredded Parmesan. This was very good. Thursday, January 11th. Happened to wake up very early, and that way I could set out the casserole before baking it. Also making a few vegetarian sausages to go with. The French toast casserole took forever to bake, like I said, because of too much liquid, but it did taste rather decadent with the croissants. It was very yummy. I will get some more eggs today. This is all I have left. went to the smaller, closer grocery store today. It probably cost three or four dollars more, but I really didn't want to go to Walmart for just this stuff. Picked up eggs, baby carrots, half and half, and 32 ounces each of strawberry and non-fat Greek yogurt. The total was $31.55. Making some rice for enchiladas tonight. Normally I would make brown rice because we had white rice last time. I try to rotate between them. However, we're almost out of brown rice. I don't buy too much of it because it does go rancid much faster. Also, going to use up these tomatoes. Dicing these up for the enchiladas. Pick these up at Trader Joe's. They did have some flavor, which we don't always get in winter. Also, I squeezed out some of the seeds and liquid. That's just a preference when baking. We'll set the tomatoes aside so I can cut up the rest of the veggies. Next is a pepper that's getting a little wrinkled. My husband and I really like onions, so we will use the whole thing. Some of the items I'll add for the enchilada filling. Ended up with two open salsas in the refrigerator, so going to add that. I don't normally. 
also like to use smoked paprika and chipotle powder. I use this jarred enchilada sauce from Whole Foods Market. It does have a decent amount of sodium, as do a few other things, so I will not add any plain salt. Adding the seasonings to the pepper and onion that are cooking in some avocado oil. Adding roasted garlic powder and some of the salsa and some of the enchilada sauce. About half of the fresh tomatoes. Took the mixture off the stove and added cooked rice. Put part of the enchilada sauce and salsa on the bottom of the baking dish. Now putting refried beans into the tortillas along with rice and veggies and rolling them up. I am not going to add any dairy into the tortillas. I'll be able to fit three of these in the dish. I don't want to waste any of the rice filling, so just added that over the top of the tortillas along with the last of the enchilada sauce and the last of the tomatoes. The final touch is some shredded pepper jack cheese from the freezer. This just came out of the oven, bubbling hot. We'll let it sit for at least 15 to 20 minutes. I didn't care for the added salsa, but the fresh tomatoes were a really good addition. Here's my plate. It was quite filling. The Amazon subscribe and save is starting to trickle in. These are Amazon brand graham crackers and Anthony Nutritional Yeast Flakes. I ran out of these. They are made in the USA. I am going to unsubscribe from this. The expiration is just always too close. We can't eat them that quickly. Mostly leftovers for the next couple days, but we'll make some fish sticks and peas tonight for the kids to add to the leftovers, of which there are plenty. Saturday, January 13th, going to hard boil some eggs in the Instant Pot. This is the only way I make them these days. It's just consistently easier to peel them. More subscribe and save showed up. This is Annie's White Cheddar Microwavable Mac and Cheese Cups. These are done, but very hot, so putting in ice water for a few. I will sometimes get one or two that don't cooperate and don't peel easily, but today everyone peeled very easily. Only took a few minutes to do them all. After I peeled them, I do rinse them off with filtered water. The only time I had a lot of trouble was when I had fresh eggs from a friend. None of them peeled well, but I'm thinking that's just because they were only a day or two old, but I am not an expert. This is the setup. I have an ice bath, a shell cracking bowl, and a storage container. I do have a paper towel in the bottom, but we'll take that out before I put it in the refrigerator. I like to absorb the water, but it seems like it would be a good place for bacteria to grow if I leave it in. Also made the last tube of Annie's cinnamon rolls this morning. Finally for the week, made some vegetarian Beyond Burgers with the Swiss and American cheese we had in the refrigerator. Overall, Pantry Challenge is going well, and it has been wonderful to go to the store less. I am grateful that I can go when needed, but I don't miss it. Next week, I'm planning to roast some vegetables, make falafel and shepherd's pie. Also want to organize the pantry and take a bit of inventory. Thanks for watching.